Hey, what's up, DIYers, Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. In the event that you are setting a preload on an outdrive engine, there are some important information we have to take into consideration prior to doing this. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers on the computer, and as you can see, Alpha One gear sets here are all the numbers and bearing set. Here is the number for that. And I contacted Mercruiser because I am rebuilding the upper unit in my outdrive, and I bought new bearings, I bought new gears, and I need to properly set the preload. However, extremely important information you have to take into consideration when you are transitioning from the original slip fit design to the press fit design of the gear and bearings. So as you can see right here, important, the latest Alpha 1 stern drive units beginning with serial number here and above. No longer use the cone spacer between the bearing and the U-joint assembly to set the bearing preload. A new procedure has been established for adjusting this preload and is covered in the following instructions. Also, the outer diameter or OD of the drive gear hub was increased by 0.0014 inches. And with that said, it basically becomes a press fit design because you no longer can shift the new bearing onto the new gear like you could the original slip fit design and this means that the bearing cones now have a slight interference fit with the gear and that's basically what we just said it is also important to note that these gear sets and the bearing set will back fit to drive units that fall below the above listed serial number and that the following bearing preload procedure should also be used for those units in those cases where the 31-35988 alpha 12 bearing set is used in conjunction with the original gear the cone spacer with the bearing set must be used all capital right there. In other words, if you're servicing your upper unit and taking the entire U-joint assembly and shaft out of the upper unit to replace your oil seal and you're using the exact same bearings and gear and you're putting it right back in, if you fall under these serial numbers, you must follow the original procedure. As you can see here, the bearing preload procedure listed in the Alpha 1 service manual right here. Let's scroll down. As you can see here, the new press fit design does require a press and by using that press, you press the first bearing cone onto the pinion gear until it seats fully against the back side of the gear. And we will show you our exact gear and bearing set that has already been pressed by the local marina. In addition, you're going to place the bearing cup onto the first bearing cone, and then you're going to place the large bearing spacer onto the bearing cup. And that is the only spacer you are going to use with the new press fit design. Again, that small inner spacer will not be used. In regards to the inner bearing or second bearing that's going onto the gear, you want it loosely pressed to alleviate damage to one or both of the bearings. Here you can see step five, press the bearing cone position right here onto the pinion gear until the bearing rollers make light contact with the bearing cup. And again, you will see exactly what we're talking about here in a minute when we show you our new press fit design gear kit and bearings. Scrolling down, this is where it talks about the preload. And here's the new picture. And as you can see, starting with the nut, You've got the washer, you've got the gear, you've got a couple shims, then you've got the lower bearing that rests flush with the gear itself, and then you've got the carrier, and then there is that large spacer that we just talked about. The picture kind of makes it larger than it really is. It's actually thinner than the carriers, and you've got an additional carrier and the additional bearing, and following this little dash line here is where it meets up with the oil seal carrier, and inside here is your oil seal. You've got your O-ring, and then you've got that thrust washer right here that the retainer nut seats up against as you tighten the retainer nut in place with the entire assembly in the upper unit scroll down and all they talk about is the preload procedure and in regards to the preload I highly recommend referring to your owner's manual or service manual to get the actual and required steps to take when setting your preload in our case with the Alpha 1 Gen 1 we are not using the original bearings that are slip fit we are using the new press fit however in the event that our oil seal went bad and we had press fit design bearings on a new gear and we did it maybe three or four years ago for example again when it comes time to reassemble everything after replacing that oil seal our preload will not be 6 to 10 because we have already compressed the bearings on the gear when they were brand new to the specification of between 6 and 10 pounds per inch or inch pounds. And that again is the preload on the bearings and that is set with this little nut and washer here. And if you haven't noticed yet, this washer is a one-time use, so the old one that you remove off from your assembly, toss that and get a new one. And when the new one comes, you will see that it has a slight arc to it by design, and that is to help properly set the preload. Again, ours is brand new, both bearing set and gear, and it's a press fit design, and we are going to perform the manufacturer steps to properly set the preload between six and 10 by using one of these rolling resistant or rolling torque tools. I want to scroll back up to this image right here, and I'm going to reference the old schematic. And to the original schematic, as you can see, starting with the nut, you've got the washer, you've got the gear, your shims, and your bearing, then the bearing carrier. And in this image, you see the small cone ring, which is your spacer that has been alleviated or taken out of the new design. And then here is that larger spacer. And in this image, it looks more realistic. It's actually smaller than the carriers themselves that house the bearings. However, again, that small spacer is not to be used on the new press fit 
get designed in our specific engine or outdrive. So again, take a good look at that right there. Let's switch over to the new schematic design. And here it is. Again, no small cone ring or spacer. Up here, back to what it says, the latest Alpha 1 stern drive units no longer use the cone spacer between the bearings in the U-Joint assembly to set the bearing preload. And with all that said, now let's go to the workstation and show you the actual gear sets, both new press fit design compared to the old slip fit design. All right, DIY is at the workstation now, and on top of the workbench is my upper unit. And to the side here is my new set of bearings and gear. And there is the original assembly that was removed from the upper unit not too long ago. And you've got your yoke shaft, you've got your U-joints, you've got your bearing set, your gears and spacers. And I'm going to open this up and talk more about it. Entire assembly is out of the bag. And again, this is the original. And this is what we call a slit fit design. And basically what that means is when you take off this nut here and the washer, you can actually pull the entire U-joint assembly shaft out, and with one hand holding the gear, you can take your other hand and shift the bearing set and spacer completely off the gear itself. And that's where it gets its name, Slip Fit. However, the new design, you cannot do that. You actually have to have a press to press the bearings on the gear, and that is why they are called Press Fit as opposed to Slip Fit. So again, in the event that you are servicing your oil seal or you are replacing your bearings and you are going to be using the original gear, the original bearings, and just replacing the oil seal, and you have a slit fit design where these bearings just slide right off the gear, when it comes time to putting everything back together and setting the preload, there is an inner washer in here that we've already talked about, and it is torqued down in most cases with the Alpha 1 Gen 1 as well as, I believe, Gen 2s and Bravos. However, we definitely recommend referring to your manual to get your exact specifications so you don't make any mistakes. The torque is 80 foot pounds and that is the original procedure by Merc Cruiser for the slip fit bearing and gear design. So what I want to do is take off this little nut on the back side and remove this and I want to show you something very important inside. With the nut off you can see the washer and thread of the opposite side of the shaft and basically I can just pick this up and pull it right out. See how it all comes apart like that? And I will continue pushing this off and I'll prop it up and I will shift it right here, and I'm going to begin taking it apart. You have a sleeve here that the retainer nut presses against. You've got an O-ring, and you've got an oil seal carrier, and inside there is your oil seal. And I'll set that aside, and again, you'll notice I can just pull up on the bearing, and it slides right off the gear. See that? And what I want to do is reposition the camera, and I'm going to start taking this apart. All right, I changed camera angles, and here is the gear. Here is the outer carrier and bearing. And in between the actual two carriers or bearings is a large spacer, as you can see here. And I am going to remove the inner bearing. And I will shift this to the side. And looks like a normal bearing, right? However, when I set that down, look what's inside here. An actual small spacer. You see that? And that is what we were just talking about on the computer. This is the original design with the slip fit bearing set. And in the event that you are servicing your original unit or slip fit design to replace that oil seal, guess what? This small ring has got to be inside this bearing set when it comes time to putting everything back together and setting your preload. And there we go. Again, you can see how easy I can take the bearing off the gear. See that? I can push it right back in. See that? Now let me clean my hands and I'll grab the new set. On the left hand side is the original slip fit design. On the right hand side is our press fit. Let's talk more about that press fit. I will shift the slip fit to the side and clean my hands once again. And taking off the oil seal carrier and oil seal as well as the sleeve that the retainer nut presses against and that o-ring I will set that aside. And here is the gear and referencing it in the same position as the old one. You can spin this very easily. However, guess what? I cannot, for the life of me, pull the bearings off the actual gear because of the change in design and diameter of the gear itself and the preload steps when it comes time to set the preload with this new press fit design. It is literally impossible to get this gear out of the bearings or the bearings off this gear. And I'll set that down. And when I had the marina press these bearings on the gear, guess what came in the package with the new bearing set? Yes, this little ring or cone spacer. And I talked to the gentleman at the marina, mentioned that I've got the new gear set and bearing, and it is not a slip fit. It needs to be pressed. We looked at the schematics that I just showed you on the computer, 
and we both agreed that this small inner spacer or cone spacer is not to be used on the new press fit design. Extremely, extremely important because in the event that you put this in there, it's going to act as a wall or stopping point for the two bearings, and you will never be able to set your proper preload. In fact, you might get to a point where you literally cannot turn that nut on the washer anymore and you are using all your strength to do so and then you check the rolling resistance with a inch pound torque wrench and it's still reading zero well that's why because this is a complete wall or stopping point for the preload on the new design so this basically goes in the garbage and diving even deeper into the new design you will notice that the gear itself spins extremely freely and the gear is completely flush with the outer bearing carrier and bearing. And I can actually move this entire spacer. You hear that? See how loose it is? And the inner bearing can rotate extremely easy. Now the procedure we just talked about on the computer, again, has the outer carrier pressed against the gear and then the inner carrier and bearing pressed on but loosely to a point where this inner spacer can be shifted and rotated in a very friendly manner by hand, as you can see. Let me get a little closer for you. See that? See how it moves? That's normal. You want it like that prior to getting this thing together and setting your preload. And because it had to be pressed on, the way it works is that nut is going to go on your shaft and you will have the word nut upward or outward. And then you are going to put on your nut and you are going to begin your preload procedures or steps. And as you tighten this to get the proper rolling torque or resistance within the bearings, you are going to tighten it several times until you actually get the perfect reading. And as you do this, because again, it is a press fit, you cannot move this by hand. However, when it's in the vise on the retainer nut and tool, and you are tightening this nut right here, the leverage you have with your socket and ratchet, as you tighten this to the proper preload, in our case, it's going to be between six and 10 because it is a brand new gear and brand new set of bearings. You will actually be compressing this inner carrier and bearing closer to the gear which you could not do by hand and that is where you are going to get the proper preload on your new bearing set and gear to ensure you are following the new press fit design procedures and steps per the manufacturer again extremely important this smaller ring or spacer is not to be used with a new set of gear bearings back to the top view and on the right hand side again is the press fit design and it spins very nicely. However, I will never be able to pull this bearing set off the gear by hand. To the left is the slip fit. It spins very nice. And as you can see, I can take that bearing set and go up and down on the gear and take it completely off the gear very easily. A big difference in design over the years with the new press fit compared to the slip fit. And DIYers, that's it. That's all we want to cover in this video. In the event that you want step-by-step -step guidance or want to watch us setting the preload on that new press fit design, definitely check out the link scrolling above. You may find it very helpful. From here, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.